Ari uh, is going to discuss leveraging uh, the knowledge capabilities of ACTOC. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. So uh, today I'm going to present you uh, work that we have been doing for a couple of years in the framework of a, a DARPA program called MindsEye program uh, on pursuing kind of uh, general uh, uh, intelligence capabilities on a system for video surveillance. Uh, so in the first part of the, of the talk I will introduce briefly the framework that we adopted in order to uh, um, build our system. And then I will show you some examples uh, um, without entering into the details of how the system works and what are the inputs and the outputs of the system. So the general idea is that the knowledge is very important for cognitive architectures. It is something that um, sometimes you don't see as you know, stressed as uh, it should be uh, in uh, cognitive architecture work. And this is a quote from the last book by John Laird, in which he said that architecture without knowledge is like a computer uh, without software. So in this shell, what we are looking for is a system that can perform purposeful behavior. So some kind of full-fledged uh, cognitive system. We call this our position like the unified stance. So integration is the key to intelligence. And if you want to achieve uh, uh, kind of intelligent systems, you have to put together, so you need to put together both mechanism-centered and knowledge-centered approaches. Um, in the sense, in our particular uh, research avenue, we're trying to uh, combine uh, cognitive architectures, ACTAR, with the uh, knowledge representation system. So this is the uh, ACTAR architecture, it's a modular architecture, in which uh, that includes uh, perceptual, motor, and declarative memory modules, which are synchronized by a procedural module to limited capacity buffers. And of course, here in ACTAR, per se, uh, uh, knowledge is something opaque, so you don't see there is no particular focus on knowledge besides the fact that there is a declarative model that can be enriched and populated with knowledge. Um, in this sense, ACTAR needs to leverage knowledge-centric cap uh, capabilities. The declarative memory usually contains only as much chunks as a task requires. And chunks usually, uh, so the, the semantics of chunks in ACTAR are really uh, uh, coarse grain, so you, don't, you cannot represent much information there. And the production system, even though you can use it for, for reasoning, is not optimal for fast reasoning. So that's why we thought about improving ACTAR with knowledge capabilities. In particular, we, we, we call this improved ACTAR, ACTAR, and we basically added a dedicated module uh, uh, synchronized with an external knowledge-based system, in particular SCORE, um, in order to reason over highly structured semantic chunks and feeding back the inferred knowledge uh, to the other models of the system. Uh, and this is just how the architecture, the ACTAR framework looks like. So an extra, uh, another, an additional module with an additional buffer and SCORE represented you know, as a network and ontology, if you want, uh, which is queried by ATAR uh, whenever there is the, the requirement, whenever the information uh, that ATAR needs to compute uh, is not enough, uh, is not sufficient uh, uh, from the environment. SCON uh, is just, uh, so I, I don't have time here to enter into the details of SCON. Uh, SCON is a knowledge based system based on LISP, and in terms of ATAR, it can be seen as an active declarative memory system plugged into it. And unlike the most uh, KBS, SCORN engine, so the reasoner, the effective reasoner, uh, adopts non-standard reasoning techniques, uh, in particular based on market passing algorithms that can be seen as kind of parallel computing or like spinning activation in ACTAR. And even for, for, for this reason, the fact that spinning of activation in ACTAR is very similar to uh, market passing algorithms, also the two different systems fit well together. Um, so, um, we, um, we developed this framework and we adopted this framework to perform, to solve a problem. The problem was to discriminate between uh, different actions in a scene, generalizing over them, and eventually trying to predict 
their outcomes. So the scenario is that of uh, a DARPA program called Mindsign, and the goal is the automatic recognition and description of anomalous or threatening behavior in support of human operators. The solution we provide here is kind of you know state-of-the-art computer vision, so the algorithms from computer vision that we need in order to uh, um, analyze, to process information from a camera, and an AGI-inspired approach when we combine cognitive capabilities with knowledge resources, in particular with an ontology of action, so a way to represent the actions that we detect from the environment. Uh, this ontology of actions, in particular, uh, uh, called here uh, Homini, so hybrid ontology for the mind's eye, is um, constituted by three basic layers. The first one is WordNet, made <coughs> from WordNet lexical database, all the, the hierarchy of action types, basically, so knowledge, which is uh, um, so be be basically verbs and nouns that correspond to event types. From FrameNet lexical database, we take what are called action schemas, so like all the core roles, non-core roles, that uh, uh, semantic roles basically played by the entities in the scene. And then we constrain all this lexical knowledge basically, lexical semantic knowledge or conceptual knowledge if you like, <laughs> but with a top level axiomatic ontology, in particular Doce. And of course, we, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, ontology has been implemented first, we implemented the ontology in OWL, and then for the proposal of the architecture, we translated everything to the, uh, uh, to the syntax of SCORE. Um, another interesting aspect uh, is one of ontology patterns. So on the basis of the ontology, you can define um, general schemas that you need to instantiate in order to have like a, I don't know, a, an action like pick up an object. So in order to pick up an object, you need first of all to bend over and to extend your arm, grasp an object, and standing up and so on and so forth. In this particular sequence, temporal sequence of micro actions, what we call uh, micro actions, and that, we can see, that can be considered as you know, atomic events, uh, the actor, so the agent is performing specific things and with specific objects. So uh, the agent plays a role, the object plays another role. And using the ontology, you can identify all these patterns, can be called ontology patterns or uh, knowledge patterns in general, or schemas. And these schemas then uh, can be used in order to prompt a choice within what we understand from the environment. So we have these. Uh, uh, this basic movement detected from, uh, from uh, the computer visual system, and then using ACTAR, screening of activation and partial matching, together with these general schemas, we can try to generalize over the uh, specific input and reason over it. Try to understand what's going on there in terms of, uh, in terms of um, you know, uh, uh, common sense or human level. This is a, like a, I don't have time to go into the details here, but this is a schema for the, some of the core uh, ontology patterns we identified for, so here you, on, on the left you have the action types, then uh, R1 to R5 are roles, semantic roles, and C1 and C4 are basic components of actions, okay, like for example if we look at arrive, arrive is composed by for example walk and stop, and uh, for walk, the agent plays the role of self-moving, self-mover, and when it stops, is like a theme in terms of uh, frame semantics. Uh, this is like a, a diagram, a representation of the task uh, that we are performing with attack. So here we have like the environment. So a couple of guys there that are uh, probably they are exchanging something, even though, as you can see, the box that they are uh, that one of the guys, person 54, he is holding, at some point is occluded in, uh, in, in, in snippet uh, number four, okay? And so in snippet uh, number five, uh, for us it's really simple to understand what's going on there, to infer what's going on there. The system needs more information to perform that kind of inference. So how the system does that is like, you know, from these features that have been computed at the computer vision level, uh, then at top, and basically receives that kind of information. So there is a person squatting, 
there is a person standing up and, uh, and a, another person walking and approaching the first person. Then uh, person 54 touches the box, then we don't see anything, and then we see that the box exits the scene, and uh, then the, and the person 60 uh, exits the scene. And there is no more, there are no more entities in the scene. So using scone and homine uh, in all these process of screening of activation and partial matching, we are able to perform a semantic analysis of the scene and performing the ontology patterns recognition that we need, for example, in order to recognize that uh, the verb pick up uh, is there because there are some basic movements and some basic uh, actions going on there. And after that, we can, uh, so exploiting, of course, the probabilistic reasoning that Attar uh, uh, let us know uh, to, to perform, we can output kind of general descriptions of the scene. Uh, like the person 54 picks up the box, person 60 approaches the person 54 on the left, so we also do some sp uh, spatial reasoning there. Person 54 gives the box to the uh, person 60 at the center of the scene, and of course, to give is another pattern that we identified, that Attar identified there. And then we know that the person 60, of course, takes the box, that is the symmetric action uh, of, 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 of give, uh, and leaves the scene towards the top left side. This is the pipeline of the general reasoning we performed here. So, as you can see there, uh, homine uh, basically provides the knowledge, so the axiom, if you want, that is needed in order to make the inference, well, since objects don't disappear from the scene, and uh, uh, interactions, uh, interaction requires proximity. Inanimate objects can move by themselves and so on and so forth. You can infer with a certain degree of probability, of course, that there has been an exchange between uh, person 54 and person 60. And this is uh, like, like to show you how the, the, the system really performs. Of course, this is the best uh, video that I can show you right now. So there are also hopeful results, but this is like one of our best results. Let's see. That should work. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So okay. So at each point in time, the system describes. So it was like a captioning in the. In the video, let me find the, the, the actual spot here. Ah, I should not have shown that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you see here, so real time we are trying to describe what's going on. So real time is, you know, is not really totally true because the computer vision part, the pre-processing, uh, requires a lot of time. And uh, but Actar, so all the model. Uh, basically, the, the, the generalization process is really fast, so it's like uh, almost real time. Okay, let's stop there. And um, so, basically, ACTAR uh, uh, leverages the knowledge factor in a cognitive architecture and supports uh, scalability, interoperability, and reasoning, and proves to perform efficiently in a specific intelligent task. Of course, here, intelligence is really you know, bounded to to uh, some, some few, few actions, uh, uh, I would say about 40 actions that we were supposed to recognize with the system. And so the overall infrastructure basically needs to be expanded for deeper reasoning and for a, a, a wider test. And also the integration between Actar and SCORM needs to be improved in terms of the flexibility and the usability, of course. And to conclude, I want to show you some nice press coverage that we had like last month after a presentation like this. It seems that uh, we, we were, okay, the US looks to replace human surveyors with computers. This was from CNET, CBS. But uh, the best one was this one in Italian. And I can uh, try to translate it for you. Is that the big brother exists and an Italian uh, invented it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.